Hi YouTube, I'm back with yet another product video. This time it's the Innovo Finger Pulse Oximeter IP900AP. This is a product that I recently picked up um, while over the last year or so since uh, COVID-19 has been raging around the world, oximeters have been a popular device. And what this device essentially does is that it checks the amount of oxygen that's flowing through your bloodstream or in other words, the ability of your, your lungs to pump in enough oxygen into your body. So that's what this is uh, essentially meant to test. And it also can read uh, your pulse rate um, in, in addition. Um, so before I dive right into the product uh, review, giving you a demo and giving my thoughts about, about this whole topic, I also uh, wanted to put out a disclaimer that I'm not a medical practitioner and the contents of this video should not be seen as expert medical advice. It is only a consumer review of this product and my thoughts as a consumer. Uh, so take it for what it's worth. Um, so as far as the, the packaging is concerned, um, you know, it says IP900 AP. Uh, one thing to also note is that the, the company Innovo uh, offers this in two variants, IP900 AP and BP. Um, the only difference between the AP and the BP is that the AP version uh, allows you to uh, set the beep and alarm function on this unit, and the BP version, I believe, does not. But otherwise, they are fairly identical, identical products. Um, this is a color OLED, so you can see on the picture here, um, and then patented multidirectional display, so you can change the, the orientation of the display, which I'll show you once I open the product. Uh, perfusion index uh, and plethysmograph. Uh, this is the blue uh, stuff that you see at the bottom there. Um, and then the brightness control can be altered on this on this unit. Uh, the feedback uh, that it gives you is pretty much in seconds. So that's immediate results. And at the bottom, you'll notice that it says IP22. And basically what that means is that it's, um, you know, safe for finger touch um, as light, you know, is being passed through your finger. Um, it's not going to give you an electrical shock or anything. So that's what that means. Flipping around, it uh, shows us what the features are, accurately determines your SpO2, which is basically the, the blood oxygen level and the pulse rate in seconds. Easy and simple to use. Simply insert your finger into the chamber, which I'll show you, and includes the plethysmograph and perfusion index to determine pulse strength. Um, small, light, and portable, as you can judge by the packaging, it's a pretty small device, uh, low power consumption. The technical specifications on this are also interesting. So OLED with six display options, as I said earlier, uh, SPO2 display range is zero to 100%. And you'll notice that, um, you know, resolution is 1%, accuracy is 70 to 100%. So I don't want you to think that uh, that's somehow a bad thing. Um, you know, basically what it means is that, you know, for a normal um, adult, your your blood oxygen level should be reading between 95 and 100. Um, and if it below, it's below 95, um, I'm sorry, you know, if it balls, falls below 85, I mean, that, those are circumstances in, in which you probably need to, um, you know, go and get some auxiliary oxygen support uh, because your lungs are simply not putting out enough oxygen into your system. Um, so that's already at a very low level, 70. Um, so the fact that it can re handle 70 to 100 is, is good because, you know, anything below 70, you, you probably need to be in ICU. Um, plus minus 2%. So that's the error ratio on this. Um, and then 0 to 69, no definition. So if it's below 70, as it says earlier, it's not going to give you any definition. Hopefully no one checks it at that level. You're, you're in the hospital by then. Pulse rate uh, measurement range, 30 to 250 beats per minute. Um, so for a normal adult, this should be between 60 and 100. Uh, and if you are in real top shape or you're an athlete, uh, your pulse rate would probably be somewhere between 40 and 60. So the fact that it can handle 30 to 250 is already pretty good. So resolution wise, it's one beat per minute and accuracy again is at two BPM. Um, power requirements to AAA outline batteries and um, the temperatures at which you are supposed to use this unit is also mentioned here, 5 to 40 degrees centigrade, uh, which is 41 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so you're not supposed to use it in, in a very cold environment or a very hot environment. And then as far as uh, storage uh, is concerned, 
you know, again, you want to store it at uh, hopefully in a, in a room temperature environment and where the humidity um, is uh, also controlled. So you, you, you're not in a highly humid area because then the unit can, can uh, you know, can uh, get damaged. So that's what this says here. Um, the unit is designed in the United States, uh, but it's manufactured in China. And uh, here's the information about the company itself. And uh, on the other side, it talks about the measurement principle, uh, but we'll take a look at this once I give you a demo on how this uh, unit actually works. There's nothing on the, at the bottom. So let me now open the product and show you what it contains. So there is a little warranty card that comes with it, uh, with information on how to get hold of support if you do need it. Uh, there is some kind of a card uh, for giving feedback, I suppose, not very important. And here you have a little user manual um, that comes with the unit. So as far as the unit itself is concerned, it uh, comes in this nicely packaged foam type material. And I think you can actually use the box for just storing it when you're not when the unit is not in use. Um, so that's nice. And here's the main unit itself. So in my hands, you can see that it's a it's a fairly small device. And uh, we'll take a look at this uh, more in a second. I did uh, unpack it from the battery uh, sleeve that it was in, um, just for the purposes of this video. And um, I noticed that the batteries are warriors brand now never heard of this brand before i wish that they had given us better batteries but um this is what comes with the unit um along with it they also give you this little string uh that you can attach to the unit itself and i think that's good because the device is fairly small and uh, in order to you know secure it uh, you can attach this uh, string um right about here so you just slide it in and then just loop it inside so then you know it's it's kind of kept safe so it comes uh, with the string and um, so now let me pop the batteries inside and uh, show you uh, the the interface of this uh, this unit and how it really works So nothing special about sliding in the batteries, um, very typical. You'll notice that uh, the unit does not have a complicated user interface. So it's a very simple interface. There's a, literally one button and the screen and uh, a slot for you to slide your finger in. Um, so it's, it's a clip uh, you know, type function. So all you do is press here and then slide your finger here and then you can take the read. So it's really as simple as that. And there is some kind of a foam type material in here. So it's a you know, very soft type material inside. Um, so that's the unit itself. And so now that the batteries are in, let me show you what, the, what it actually shows you as you click it. So if I click this button, it uh, shows that the finger is out. So there's obviously nothing inside. And then it shows you that what, how much battery is left. So you can see that it's, uh, um, you know, it turns off uh, very quickly. So I think it turns on for three seconds and then it turns off. So SPO2 and, uh, you know, this. So now let me click it and show you what I meant by beep and alarm function. So if I click it uh, and press it for like three seconds, it uh, opens up this menu of settings. So there's an alarm setup. Uh, you can set the alarm off, which is by default, the, both the alarm and beep is turned off. So I could turn this on. And then here's the brightness. So how much brightness do you want? Um, this is default at four. And then there is a reset, which is the factory reset button. And then you can, you know, press it and exit out of it. So I want to show you the alarm setup functionality. So if you press it for like two seconds, it will go into the next mode. And then you can go into what's your SPO to high and low at which you want the alarm to go off. So by default, it's set at 195, which is considered normal. Oh, this is another thing that I wanted to show you that you can change the, the, the orientation, which is what it said on the packaging here, that you can change the, the orientation. I think it says on the box, uh, patented multi multi-directional display uh, if it comes up properly so that's what they were really talking about so as i you know open it 
and I click, click it every time because it, you can either use your left hand or your right hand to pop your finger in. So you might want to change the orientation of, you know, where you can read it properly. And so it allows you to flip it any way, which way you want. So going back into the settings function, if I go here and I go into alarm setup, oops, let me go up here again. And uh, so here, it, um, you know, obviously defaults at 195, which is high and low. And your your pulse uh, is at 190, I think. So that's the pulse rate alarm high and low. Um, if you want to change that, you can. Um, and here, uh, if I turn this on, I just need to press it and it turns on. And then beep is set at on. So now they're both on. And then... If I go to setup, I want this to be, I'll just stick with the defaults, but you know, if you think that uh, you need to change this, you can. Okay. All right, so now it's um, set the, the beep and alarm function, which is part of the AP model is now set. And let me uh, now show you how to actually use this product. So now, you know, obviously um, you can use, use either your left or right hand, but uh, studies have shown that you should be using your dominant hand for the measurement. So I'm a right-handed person, so I'll probably use my right hand. And now the question is, which wing finger should go in? Should you use your index finger or some other finger? And again, you know, based on my research, they said that you should be using your, your middle finger uh, to do the study because that's the, the tallest and the, the strongest finger you have in your in your hand. Um, but you know, you could use the index finger also because this, you know, they are comparable, comparable fingers. It's just a little bit larger, but if you want to be strictly, you know, by the book, then you should be using your middle finger. So anyway, so that's, um, what you got to do. And, uh, there are a couple of things to, to tell you about how does this, this unit actually work. So, you know, what happens basically is that, um, there are two electrical light signals that are emitted from the top portion of this unit. There is an infrared light and there is a red light that is getting passed through the finger. So as I put this in, the light is getting put through and there's a sensor built at the bottom that is picking up the light that is actually able to get through the finger and reach here. And then there's software built into the unit with a processor that actually calculates how much light was sensed by the sensor at the bottom. And then, you know, based on the algorithm that it contains, it tells you what is the rating, you know, the numbers on, um, or your SpO2 reading or your pulse rate. So it's dependent on that. So, you know, obviously when you have any kind of a measurement being taken, there can be errors that you can introduce. So what are those errors? So first of all, you can be, you know, in a environment where the ambient light that, that, the, that, the, that you're taking the measurement in is uh, too strong. And uh, so, you know, what the unit is going to do is basically check how much ambient light is in there and then, you know, factor that in as it does the calculation. Um, so you, so that's something to be aware of. And then the other thing is that because you're putting your finger in, if you are a woman uh, and you have nail polish on, that can actually also mess with the reading. So ideally, you don't want to have nail polish on, um, you know, before you take the, take the reading because it can affect your your measurement um, and then you know when you take the measurement um, this is something I also was researching that depending on the skin tone that you have um, if you are a you know let's say a white or a Caucasian person uh, you might have a you know slight variation in the reading you know compared to someone who's uh, you know has an African ancestry for example and they have high you know dark skin uh, because it's really light being passed through your finger, um, you know, it can uh, affect the reading a little bit, um, although it's not, it's, 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 you know, fairly marginal. But those are things that I wanted to, you to be aware. So which is why that, uh, that one point, uh, you know, up and down can happen based on some of these variables uh, that you are looking at, which is why they say that the ratio is between 95 and 100, um, which is considered normal. But if you have, let's say, 94, it might be because of some of those errors that, that are getting introduced into, into the read. 
So regardless, if I have to take a reading now, all I got to do is put my finger in here. I'm going to use my index finger for, for this one and turn this thing on. And it's going to do a read hopefully soon here. So it's obviously showing me a read of 100 and that uh, there's an alarm going on as well. So you can see that it uh, fluctuates a little bit um, as it does it. And on the right, the lower number that you see is my pulse rate. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the read that I, that I get. Um, so if I take this out, you know, now the, the reading's gone. I don't believe it stores your, your reading uh, like you see in some blood pressure machines, for example. So you need to, you know, note this down uh, if you want to keep a log or something. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, reads it for you. Um, and so I've, if, after I put my finger in, I simply click on this button and um, it will start passing those light. You can probably see that some light is going through. Uh, it's It's a little bit lit up inside. Um, and it's going to give me my reading. So if you're annoyed by this alarm, you can obviously turn this off. Um, but this is what my read, reading says. So overall, I'm in you know, physically in good shape. It doesn't show my oxygen levels to be too low. Um, so I want to be above 95. So that's where I'm at. And uh, my, my pulse rate seemed to be okay as well because it needs to be between 60 and 100. So I can obviously switch this off and uh, I'm good to go. So this is basically, you know, how you use the device itself. Um, I think it's uh, made nicely. The Innova brand has been around for, for a little while. It's not a completely new product. Um, and although you can buy an oximeter for as low as like 10 or 12 bucks, but this one I picked up for around $25. And I think, um, you know, based on its reputation and the general ratings that it has, uh, it's it's a it's a good uh, good product, at least for home usage. Uh, with with you know knowing that there is some amount of uh, variation to expect because of all those factors you know I was talking about. Um, is this something that you should buy? Uh, yes, you should. I think um, you know. But the other thing that I would also like you to be aware of is that you can't go by the measurement of uh, this unit itself. If you have other symptoms. Um, you know, that you are looking at, which is not, so your, your reading might be normal, but if you have other symptoms that then you still, sh you should really should go see a doctor because there might be other reasons behind what, what, whatever is affecting you. Or the flip side, if, if you are not getting any readings, uh, meaning you're, you're, you're not seeing many symptoms, but the, the blood oxygen level is low, that is yet another reason for you to go see a doctor uh, and, and, you know, get yourself checked out uh, just to be on the safe side. So, you know, I think it's a good way to uh, check on, on yourself uh, from time to time. And uh, particularly if you are a heavy smoker or you have other, you know, conditions, um, then I think it's a, it's, a, it's a nice device, nice, you know, handy, cheap device to have on your person. So if you like this video, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel and hit a like. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.